Today is Remembrance Sunday, a day where people from all over Britain gather to remember those who have given their lives for their country. The Royal British Legion has been at the heart of these commemorations since it began in 1921. We pray for the Royal British Legion and other service organisations that care for ex-servicemen and women. Today, Maidstone's division is represented by Ivor Owen, who is paying tribute at the service. I initially got involved when I first came out of the army. I was looking um, at a way to give something back to the community after spending 24, 25 years in the forces. Long before Remembrance Day, Ivor and his team worked tirelessly throughout the year to raise funds for the charity here at their central Maidstone office in Marsham Street. I signed up yeah, to this branch, Maidstone branch, uh, and that was in 1989. I've been uh, the chairman for, I don't know, 23 years, something like that. I served boys service, I served with the 1st Battalion Royal Green Jackets and then I was transferred to the 3rd Battalion Royal Green Jackets, which are now called the Rifle Brigade. It's a case of doing something what you believe in. Um, obviously I believe passionately uh, with the uh, Royal British Legion, it does a lot of good especially this time of year, um, which is now, uh, which is coming to a close, the is the poppy appeal. Give, 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 give everybody it's all for the Royal British Legion, please. The Royal British Legion's poppy appeal is a high profile campaign with support from well-known celebrities and public figures alike. The poppy appeal is based in the Royal British Legion's village in Ausford, Kent. Ray Shepherd is head of the appeal. The poppy pill itself is, is very important. Um, it's an iconic event that goes on every November, whereby uh, there's a call to arms to come out and donate and, and buy a poppy uh, in support of armed forces um, personnel and their beneficiaries. We have a, a collecting team of 4,000 poppy appeal organisers that are helped by over 300,000 volunteers that will collect on the streets for a two week period in November. Last year that generated nearly £38 million pounds, uh, of funds, which directly goes back into the spend uh, in support of the, of the service personnel. Um, it is probably getting to a point now where we need to make sure that the Royal British Legion's work is, is truly understood, particularly by the younger generation. As, as we know, the older generation are, are, are well um, informed on the Legion and, and what it's done in the past, and particularly the Poppy Appeal. Um, but we are giving a tremendous support, um, particularly through groups such as cadets, um, who come out every November and support, help us collect and bring lots of money in for us, as well as um, programmes within schools where children are taught about the value of the poppy, the significance of the poppy. The charity's biggest poppy factory is overseen by manager Steve Belding. Here at Alsford, we're responsible for the global distribution of the poppy and associated products for the Poppy Appeal, covering everything from wreaths to poppies to building poppies to poppy pins and of course the famous stick-on and mainstream poppies. The machines at Alsford produce up to 40,000 poppies a day, with 45 million being produced in this centenary year alone. We are consistently putting together uh, packages and parcels to distribute all over the UK and the world and uh, it's uh, very, very busy. Once the poppies have been distributed, volunteer Maureen from the Martian Street office begins the epic task of counting the money. All the things have started coming back from various places. It's my job 
to count the money, record it, and then make sure the books balance at the end. We, um, we don't know yet how much we've collected. In 2014, the Maystone branch aimed to be one of the highest contributors to the £40 million raised by the Poppy Appeal. The money that's raised goes to help ex-service men and women and their families like Pete Dunning. I joined the Marines in December 2005, passed out of training in September 2006, and then it was only six months later when I was on my first tour of Afghanistan after that. 25th of May 2008, um, the vehicle I was in, uh, we drove over an IED, blew the two cabs apart. I lost both my legs, um, fractured my spine, punctured my left lung. By the time I was living at my mum and dad's, so we used to have bogs on the dog, corner bath with shower above it. So that's where the Legion really stepped in and that's where me and Legion um, started. They helped. Uh, fund the adaptions in my mum and dad's bathroom to get into a wet room um, and also for a couple of little adaptions at uh, my work where I was back at Yeovilton. The help from the Legion has been fantastic. Well I've been standing about 44 years, I'm in my 44th year. I've been doing this parade for nearly 30 odd years and we go from here up to the Cenotaph and then do all the ceremonies up the Cenotaph and then march back <laughs> past the town hall, salute to the mayor. It means a lot. Father was ex-service, mum was ex-service, they were both in the Legion. I've been in the Legion since 1972 and uh, I'm carrying on the tradition of the family. This year, the tradition of remembrance is being reinvigorated by the poppy installation at the Tower of London. It has inspired descendants like Beverly Nolka to reconnect with their military history. When I was uh, about three, my father died and um, I didn't really keep in touch. None of my family kept in touch with my father's side of the family. So um, when my mother died, uh, a few years ago, it sort of dawned on me that um, that's it, you know, how am I, who am I going to ask and who am I going to find out about my family's history. So um, a, a cousin of my father's um, befriended me on Facebook and she made a comment about her uncle, Geoffrey, who died during the First World War. And um, that sort of piqued my interest, so I contacted her and she told me some more information about him. And his name was Geoffrey, and he was a flight sergeant, um, and his name was Geoffrey Cross. And he actually uh, flew an aeroplane which towed a glider uh, which was carrying parachutists on D-Day. Um, unfortunately, his plane was um, shot down and he died, but the parachutists successfully um, landed, and it was a, a successful mission on his part. But unfortunately he died um, and he was only 19 years old so I just found that really really sad and I just felt that sort of getting involved with um, the Tower of London uh, project and planting the poppies in remembrance of all of the soldiers that had died during World War I was um, very important to me and my family. The British Legion want to build on this interest and encourage a new generation to get involved in their campaign and fundraising. It's always a struggle here to try and keep the membership up. I would have thought a branch like this should have something like 300, 400 members. This is what it's about as the older generation dies, the younger generation hopefully will uh, take the role uh, of keeping the Royal British Legion going for all the good it does. It's important to me for my children to know why um, we went to war and why all of these soldiers died and it's important for me that they remember and it's not just lost in history, it's not something that we archive, it is something that should be remembered and treasured. They shall grow not old, 
as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. And at the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them.